When I read, I want to understand it too. I just don't want to read. I want to understand what I'm reading. When I read my books, I use notes. Before this class, I wouldn't read them, but now I take this class. I go home and read every day. So this year in the Reading Initiative, we've been implementing cognitive strategies within that class with the emphasis on more students reading books of their choice closer to their Lexile level. We had them actually do the ERLA, which is a reading assessment, but then actually look at the, the comprehension rubrics that are in Mosaic of Thought to say at what level can kids comprehend that text. It was eye-opening, and it leads directly to what then teachers can do to instruct. Because the text is not going to tell you that this is a challenge. You have to figure that out from what you read. This is really about the cognitive strategies that are necessary to help students think through text and understand what they're reading and increase their comprehension. And so those cognitive strategies are supported through graphic organizers, through use of uh, manipulatives like post-its and highlighters to be able to track their thinking. There's opportunity for them to read on a multitude of uh, topics. With the new knowledge that they're reading, they create a question Sometimes they ask the question and they put it on a sticky note, put it on the book page itself, and then perhaps a page later, they have an answer to that question. So it's really about breaking down what students are reading, what knowledge they're adding to the reading, and how they're able to come to those conclusions with evidence and justification. Sometimes it's within their own heart, the answer. It's an inference that they make. I can connect to some of the stuff that be happening in the books. When I read something and I can relate to it, I understand it better. Uh, yeah, it helped me become a better reader because I'm not just reading it. I'm like actually writing down and checking my thoughts. One of the pieces that is so present in this support for literacy is that students are individually assessed. They sit with the teacher and the teacher takes time to say, I'm investing in you, I'm understanding where your needs are in literacy, I'm seeing the strategies you apply, and I'm going to support you as an individual to get to your next step. Not do we just say we're student-centered, but indeed we act in student-centered ways. Well, it may take some getting used to, but the student is running the classroom. Everything that happens in the class is really dependent on what the students are reading. Even though there is opportunity for peer work and collaboration, but the teacher is in the background. They're facilitating the choice of the books. They are um, issuing the, the EARLA so that they can continuously assess where the students are with their reading. And they're having independent conversations with the students regarding their data. But in actuality, there's a lot of student independent reading. Is that your inference? What did they say in the book? The philosophy the has to be that the teacher is a hands-on individual but not necessarily standing at the board and going over a particular skill. My book is about racism that happened in Greenwood and about what happened to Emmett Till. We also celebrate books with reviews that are actively a vocal opportunity where they can share back and forth. And what's so exciting about this reading work is that we're not just teaching children to read for a test. Even if my teacher told me that I didn't have to do it anymore, I would still like get a sheet of paper and I write what I read about. To know that I want to track my thinking and that I should be writing down what I'm thinking in hopes of getting a better answer, a better outcome, I think is great. When we looked at the SARs and the teachers, we analyzed those, we noticed that kids were throwing in a citation. They were just throwing something in. So in, instead of looking at a, a formatted way to approach SAR, the way we started approaching it is we're having kids highlight in their text quotations or sections of text evidence, notating off the, on the side what they're thinking. Then when they read that SAR, they can go right back in that text and they can say, oh, I already have the answer to this. For Kashmir, it was a matter of stepping out and be willing to take the risk. And she's willing to take chances and risks with developing a new type of classroom that really could benefit all those things that she knows students need. We have that job embedded coaching where the consultant goes into the room, works with the teacher directly, uh, models and coaches on the spot. Sure. Should, should we give them something here that's more generic in nature that they could use because that's where their breakdown is on inference. They can read something. They read She's it actually well taught the class and given me some really good ideas with regards to teaching a particular method. We talked about a mini lesson. A mini lesson is five to ten minutes. Tell us what your thinking is during this time too. What are you thinking in your head? I will use this for my mini lesson. I will show kids that I'm a reader. 
I will actually read a piece of it, stop, or if I've done that when I was reading, will share with the kids what I'm doing. Well, in the traditional classroom, let's be honest, you pass out the reading, they take notes on it, you read it as the teacher, their notes possibly, and you say, oh, you understood, or you didn't understand, or that was a great thought, but it stops there. And that's not real world learning. Uh, the real world requires us to share our thoughts and engage with others and come up with new ideas. Separate schools, like, they had to go to separate places and all that. They couldn't live in, like, them good, big neighborhoods and all that. I found there's three different ways kids can actually read text in a classroom. One is that individual self-selected text, and that's where everyone's going to read something different, but they have a common strategy that they're focusing on. The other type is book club, and what we find is, is that when we have kids have books that they have to read for a longer period of time, it's not that they're reading one chapter at a time, they're developing as readers. The third type is inquiry, and that's where kids are investigating and they're finding out about something that is of interest to them. When you can have students feel empowered with literacy and feel empowered to see that this actually starts to impact all their content areas, and also just see that someone has paid attention to their needs, this can make a difference for them across the board in school. The effects, just from September to January, uh, the powerful impact that implementing these strategies can have. It's not a program, it's not a quick fix, it's hard work, it's time, it's commitment, but when you make literacy your priority and focus on these cognitive strategies and provide your students and teachers the appropriate resources, then we just might be hitting the nail on the head at this point with literacy. If you're going to make a reading class, make sure you put kids that's not interested in it. So if you do that, it can help them become better readers and it can just help them out with a whole bunch of stuff in life.